Imagine walking through a forest and spotting a deer. Graceful, majestic, but something's not quite right. Welcome to a journey that will take us through the forest trails and into the world of one of the most peculiar and unnerving phenomena affecting our wildlife. The chronic wasting disease, more dramatically known as the zombie deer disease. This strange and unsettling name comes from the disease's effects on deer, causing them to behave in ways that are, well, rather zombie-like. But what exactly is this disease? How does it affect deer? And why is it a cause for concern not only for these graceful creatures, but potentially for other wildlife and even humans? In this video, we'll unravel the mystery of the zombie deer disease, exploring its causes and transmission, its impact on deer populations, the potential risks it poses, and the efforts being made to manage and prevent its spread. So join us as we delve into the unnerving world of the so-called zombie deer disease. Chronic wasting disease, or CWD, is a lot more than just a scary nickname. The term zombie deer disease might conjure up images of B-movie horror flicks, but this disease is a very real and very serious issue for deer populations across North America. First identified in the late 1960s in Colorado, CWD has since been detected in 26 U.S. states and three Canadian provinces. It's a type of prion disease similar to mad cow disease in cattle or creutzfeldt jakob disease in humans. Prions are misfolded proteins that can cause other proteins in the brain to also misfold, leading to damage in the nervous system. In deer, elk, and moose, CWD can lead to drastic weight loss, stumbling, listlessness, and other neurological symptoms, hence the nickname zombie deer disease. The animals may appear vacant or unresponsive as though they've been zombified, but it's important to remember that these are very real symptoms of a very real disease, and they can lead to death in the affected animals. While it's called zombie deer disease, it's not just deer that are affected. The disease has been found in other cervids as well, including elk, reindeer, and moose. This, coupled with the fact that there's currently no known cure for CWD, makes it a significant concern for wildlife management and conservation efforts. So, what does this mean for deer populations? Well, the impact of CWD can be devastating. Infected animals often die within two years of showing symptoms, and the disease can have a significant impact on population numbers. It's not just the individual deer that suffer either. CWD can affect entire herds, and once it's in an area, it's very difficult to eradicate. So, we now know what CWD is and how it got its terrifying nickname, but how does it spread among deer? The transmission of CWD brings us to the world of prions. Prions are misfolded proteins that can trigger normal proteins in the brain to fold abnormally. In the case of chronic wasting disease, these prions are the root cause, leading to damage in the nervous system of deer that often results in unusual behavior, weight loss, and eventual death. This disease is unique in its infectiousness. Unlike most diseases, there is no virus or bacteria to fight off. The prions themselves are incredibly resilient, surviving in the environment for years, waiting to be picked up by a new host. They can be found in the soil, in water, and in the plants that deer feed on. Even more troubling is that prions are shed in the bodily fluids of infected deer, including saliva, urine, and feces, adding to their environmental persistence. Imagine a deer, infected with CWD, grazing in a meadow. As it feeds and moves, it leaves behind prions that can potentially infect other deer that come to feed in the same area. And the cycle continues, creating a hotbed of infection in the environment. This is precisely why CWD has been so difficult to contain. Its transmission is not just direct from one deer to another, but also indirect through the environment. It's a silent, invisible spread that has seen the disease reach far and wide. The geographical spread of CWD is alarming. It was first identified in Colorado in the late 1960s, but since then, it's been found in 26 states in the United States and has even crossed borders into Canada, Norway, Finland, and South Korea. Now, you might be wondering if all deer species are susceptible to CWD. The answer is, unfortunately, yes. The disease has been found in white-tailed deer, mule deer, moose, elk, and reindeer. It's a sobering reminder of how a single misfolded protein can have such a profound impact on wildlife populations. As we can see, CWD is a formidable enemy. But what is the impact on deer populations? The effects of chronic wasting disease on deer populations are devastating. Not only does it affect their health, but it also drastically alters their behavior. Deer inflicted with this disease suffer from severe weight loss. 
hence the nickname zombie deer disease. They lose their fear of humans and exhibit abnormal behavior, such as listlessness and a lack of coordination. This makes them easy targets for predators, further decimating the population. The disease's impact on deer health is further emphasized by the high mortality rate associated with it. Once a deer contracts CWD, it is essentially a death sentence. There is currently no cure or treatment, and the disease is always fatal. The mortality rate is nearly 100%, meaning that virtually all deer that contract the disease will eventually succumb to it. But it's not just individual deer that suffer. Entire populations can be wiped out. In some areas, deer populations have declined by up to 40% due to the spread of CWD. And this is a conservative estimate. In heavily affected regions, the decline could be even more severe. Now you may be wondering, what does this mean for the ecosystem as a whole? Well, deer play a significant role in their environments. They are a key prey species for predators like wolves and cougars, and their grazing habits influence the type and abundance of vegetation in an area. A decline in their numbers can have a ripple effect, impacting other species and the overall health of the ecosystem. It's also worth noting that CWD is not just confined to deer. It can also affect other members of the cervid family, such as elk and moose. This broadens the potential impact of the disease as it threatens a wider range of wildlife species. In conclusion, the consequences of chronic wasting disease on deer populations are severe and far-reaching. It's not just about the deer themselves, but the entire ecosystem that they are a part of. While the effects on deer are clear, the potential risks to other wildlife and humans are less certain. The question that's on everyone's mind, can chronic wasting disease or CWD jump species? As we delve deeper into the world of this formidable disease, it is only natural to ponder upon its potential to affect other wildlife, and more concerningly, humans. The current body of research paints a complex picture. While CWD is known to primarily affect species within the deer family, including elk and moose, there is ongoing scientific debate about its potential to impact other wildlife. Some studies suggest that scavengers feeding on infected carcasses might be at risk, but there is still much we don't know for certain. But what about us humans? Can we contract this disease? As of now, there is no known case of CWD transmission to humans. However, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention caution that experimental studies have raised the concern that CWD may pose a risk to people. The similarity between CWD and diseases such as mad cow, which have made the jump to humans, only fuels this concern. The implications of such a jump would be significant. It would not only pose a public health risk, but could also impact hunting, a crucial part of wildlife management in many regions. We must tread this path of understanding with caution and not sensationalism. The potential for CWD to jump species is a concern, but efforts are underway to manage and prevent its spread. Managing and preventing the spread of chronic wasting disease is a complex task. It requires the concerted efforts of wildlife agencies, researchers, and even you, the public. These dedicated individuals and organizations are engaged in a multi-pronged approach, focusing on research, field testing, and public education. They're striving to gain a deeper understanding of this insidious disease, seeking to unravel its mysteries and find potential solutions. Field testing is a crucial part of this process. It involves tracking and testing deer populations, particularly in areas where CWD has been detected. By doing so, they can monitor the disease's spread and assess its impact. Public education, like this video, also plays a pivotal role. The more we understand about CWD, the better equipped we are to help prevent its spread. Awareness can lead to responsible wildlife practices that minimize the risk of transmission. While the fight against chronic wasting disease is challenging, every effort counts. Zombie deer disease, a chilling moniker for a serious wildlife issue. We've journeyed through its origins, transmission, effects, and potential risks to other wildlife and even us. We've also seen the commendable efforts in managing and preventing this disease. As we wrap up, we implore you to stay informed, stay vigilant. Your support for wildlife conservation efforts can make a world of difference. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of CWD. Remember, knowledge is power. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and support wildlife conservation efforts wherever you can.